Two minutes ago, this man was on the 405. <laughs> but now he's sitting to Four my right. Four seconds ago. Right here on the Rich Eisen Show. He's the chairman of VaynerX and CEO of Vayner Media, currently subject of uh, the Daily V. I mean, I could go on and on and on. The Gary V Audio Experience, Top 50 Global Podcast. He is none other than Gary Vaynerchuk. How are you, bud? I'm amazing, Rich. I'm sorry I'm late. No, don't worry. Oh, are you really amazing? Reed's, Reed's fault. Even your, well, I, I understood yeah. that. You know, we, we understand our, our mutual <laughs> friend Reed is, <laughs> yeah, he, he makes Bill Clinton look on time. Um, so, hey, uh, I, I'm, even your, your, your sense of positivity is not, is not squelched by the 405 traffic? Not even that, Gary? No, I, I just have, you know, empathy for everybody here in the audience and you. Like, that, that, the, was, <laughs> that was my problem. But I, I'm, a, I'm a Jersey boy. Traffic is like oxygen. Now, where in Jersey are you from? I grew up in Edison, New Jersey, uh -huh. um, and so uh, a lot of Turnpike and uh, Garden State Parkway traffic through okay. the years. Okay, sure. So then what exit are you? That's, uh, the, that's yeah. the, as you know, that's the, the, you know, the phrase. Uh, mm -hmm. 131, you know. Okay. That. How did you get started, <clears throat> Gary? You know, I was born in the former Soviet Union. I would, I would say I was an entrepreneur before it was the cool thing like it is now. Lemonade stands, baseball cards. Um, my dad eventually dragged me into the liquor store that he owned, and I stocked shelves in my teenage years. I realized people collected wine that attached to my, you know, passion around sports collecting. Yes. And I launched one of the first e-commerce wine businesses in America in 1996, winelibrary.com. How old were you? Uh, at the time, I was 21. And, uh, and that's kind of what started everything. Uh, to give context, because this is, you know, knowing this show, my full business ambition is to buy the New York Jets. <laughs> And so at the time, I thought I'd open up the Toys R Us of wines. It didn't work out for Toys R Us, so I'm glad I didn't go down that path. But right. open up 4,000 wine stores, sell the franchise, buy the Jets. Along the way, the dot-com became big. YouTube came out. I started a YouTube show. It exploded. I realized I had another knack, which was what are people going to do with technology before other people knew? Mm -hmm. It led me to becoming an investor. And the first three companies I invested in were Facebook, Twitter, and Tumblr. I've heard of them. And that worked out. That's given me a chance to maybe do this Jets thing. Uh, and then I started this company called Vayner Media mm -hmm. because I realized that people were wasting money in marketing on print, outdoor television. And not all print, not all outdoor, not all television. But And by the way, and banner ads on websites and search. Just, you know, I would argue in, in a 2018 world, the 5,000 biggest advertisers in America, or globally for that matter, are probably wasting somewhere in the ballpark of 80 to 90 cents on the dollar. Mm -hmm. And I became a historian of what happened between radio and television transition. And so that's what I've been up to now. Gary Vaynerchuk here on The Rich Eisen Show. Okay, so th that and also I saw you uh, at the NFL draft. My you brother and I started VaynerMedia. Two years ago he left. We started yeah. a Jerry Maguire agency called Vayner Sports. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, yeah, we're going to build the biggest sports agency in the world. And so you currently represent? Uh, About 15 guys in the NFL. We're NFL right. only. We're looking at esports and NBA uh, you know, Braxton Miller, Josh Jackson, uh, Matt Paradis, uh, mm -hmm. on and on and on. And so um, we're very excited about that world. I think it's ripe for disruption. So what do you mean by that? So for esports, because yes. that, that is something that is off the charts. Yep. But a lot of mainstream sports fans yes. who are listening and watching us right now, eh, that's something that kids do. That's something that. You know, yeah. that, that it's not, I'm not going to sit down and watch a video game. I mean, what, what, what do you see for the future of esports? The Gary? 1982 NBA Finals was on tape delay in America. Mm. That's what I see, which is I don't care what people say now. I know that 36 year old Rick doesn't care about esports, but the 16 year old version of him, the exact same person, mm -hmm. thinks that Ninja is one of the three best athletes in the world um, because he's the best Fortnite player in the world. You know, we've seen the ebb and flow. Right, our great grandfathers thought that horse racing and boxing were the number one and two sports, along with baseball of the day. You know, anybody who's naive and doesn't understand the ebb and flow of the favorite sports of our culture, mm -hmm. esports is out the bag. Like Twitch is like dominating. It's here. It's real. And over the next 20, 30 years, it will be a top four sport. Do you think the current conventional top four sports, Gary Vaynerchuk, right now have a millennial problem? I think baseball think? and hockey potentially do. I think that the NBA is dominating. And I think the NFL, you know, and we spend a lot of time in the sports world talking about this, is still kind of like just the limited nature of games, mm -hmm. right? Like TJ's gonna lose his mind if the, if the Cowboys lose the first two games of the year. There's only 16 of them. 
just the limited nature of that sport, I think, will hold it strong. But you're, po- you're pointing to uh, Rich Eisen's show, Social Media yes. Man Extraordinary, TJ Jefferson. Yes. How old are you, TJ? He's up there, Rich. That's He's what also, I'm saying. By the way, has he sat in this seat and talked about wrestling? Because his knowledge is deep, and the world needs to hear it. Well, that I agree with you, Gary. <laughs> okay, just want to that establish not, that, that while I'm here. That has not yet happened. Okay, okay. But we do have the platform to do okay, that. Okay, good. But I, I guess my point is... is a, If Bryce just, Harper walked down Main Street anywhere in the U.S. right now, mm-hmm. literally if Bryce Harper was walking naked through Broadway right now, mm-hmm. a lot of people wouldn't know it's him. That's a bam Baseball wants to monetize every digital asset problem, and that's a problem mm-hmm. because we're not. You have to build up the athlete, mm-hmm. right? And Trout and Harper and Kershaw don't get enough commercials. And if the content's not living on YouTube and Instagram outside of the MLB network, mm-hmm. there's a problem. Well, did you see the video? I know you've been traveling the world. Did you see the video of Terry Collins that got out there? That, no. Did you see that? Okay, where no. it was Major League Baseball had Terry Collins. Yep. Um, Terry. Well, actually. He, he, the former Mets manager, this is a year old, you could hear it on the microphone picked up by the Major League Baseball umpire. Somebody leaked it. It was when uh, Collins got thrown out. It was very profane. You could hear the umpire talking yes. about how maybe he was in trouble with yes. Major League Baseball yes. based on what was going on if he, if he didn't throw him and his pitcher out for throwing behind somebody. And baseball yanked that off the, off the internet because they had a deal with the Major League Baseball umpires yep. to not get it out there. Do you think that's the sort of stuff that maybe sports league should be allowing out there, despite what it might mean for? I think you know it's, it's weird. I made the TJ inside. reference back to wrestling. I think all sports need to take a page out of Vince McMahon's playbook and actually build up these personalities at all costs. Mm-hmm. At all costs, like I, I am um, the fact that Juju Smith Schuster is dramatically more culturally relevant than all of the baseball all stars combined mm-hmm. is a baseball problem. The mm-hmm. end. Rich, like, this is about attention. This is back to my guy, Joe Namath. This is like, Sonny made Joe Namath a celebrity. Mm -hmm. And that drove it. And so this is celebrity culture and the ESPNs and the Barstools and this show and and social media and all this, this is all about attention arbitrage. And we live in a new world and hockey and baseball are looking backwards for short-term economics. Mm -hmm. The NBA, Adam Silver is dominating these other commissioners, laughing at them probably in his sleep. Uh, And the NFL is just like this big conglomerate, 16 games. Listen, if the NHL goes to 16 games, it's a top four sport in America. (laughs) Like, look at the World Cup, right? Like, people can't, like, by the way, while we're filming right now, like, you know, I'm so pumped Germany's out. This is just random two cents for (laughs) just, like, South Korea punching Germany in the mouth Mm -hmm. is about as delicious of a flavor as I could (laughs) taste this morning. I'm very excited. And Brazil just scored while we just uh, chatted, uh, while we were talking about... uh, Millennials, Gary yes. Vaynerchuk, entrepreneur, multiple best-selling author, New York Times bestseller list, et cetera, et cetera, here on the Rich Eisen Show. So, uh, Namath was your guy? Is that, is that how well, you I got mean, I'm a Jets? diehard Jets fan. I mean, well, I, didn't get, I didn't get this. Living uh, in Madison, Eric Godfrey went outside. 19 kids, everybody listening, this is how we did in 82. You move to a neighborhood, your mom throws you outside for 10 hours and you find friends. It was very rude. <laughs> that's how we did it, right? I mean, that's like, I, I don't think kids know what the world used to be. I went outside. Right. There's Three kids throwing a Nerf ball, green and white. They asked me what my favorite football team is. I'm just learning how to speak English at this point, Rich, you know, because I, I wasn't born here. I go, I don't know. They're like, you're a Jets fan. It's the 82 season. Yeah. The Jets go to the AFC Championship game. That's right. I think I've got this figured out. Look at, we got a little shot of you Look up there. That. Look at you with your bro. Little age. <laughs> That's amazing. You guys are talented around here. Look at like that. that. Come on, Gary. Yeah. We knew we had to step I was our a, game and up if you. Look, you. I was a Jets and Yankees fan, which was a Jersey combo, right? No wonder we get along so well. That's me too. And so, uh, and you know, I'm an 80s baby though. So all I had was Mattingly. I of course grew up the one era the Mets were better than the Yankees, (laughs) right? Uh, There's another weird thing with me from a fandom standpoint though. The Yankees and Rangers both won championships for me in 94 and 96. Yes. And I basically checked out. I'm now fully all in just Jets and Knicks. I, I care about the climb. Dude, Jets and Knicks. I mean, you're, you're, what do you think of Dolan, Gary? I, think he's te- I don't think he's a good owner. I don't, you know, I don't, I, I, don't, I, I don't think Dolan's a good owner. I don't think so either. You know? Why? I, Can you buy the Knicks first? Can you do that? You know, I, I mean, first uh, of all, I have to amass a lot of wealth, so I'm, I'm working yes. out here. But it's going to come down to timing of death. 
me owning the Jets or Knicks is me completely predicated on the Dolans or Johnsons dying. <laughs> like this is not something I can control. You know, uh, so I don't know if I can or I can't. Rich, while I have you and I know so many yes, sports fans, can we talk about bandwagon fans? Can we just segue here? Let's hold on. Let's 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 take a break here. Okay, I know you got to well, you got to no, pay for this thing. Well, we it. have to yeah, you know. I'm works. a businessman. A, <laughs> let's go to multiple breaks. Next long final segment. Oh gosh. At Gary V on Twitter, Instagram, etc. We're back with Gary Vaynerchuk going all in on uh, on uh, on Fairweather fans when we come back here. Gary Vaynerchuk here on the Rich Eisen show. Um, wow, where do we go first? Let's, Let's stick on bandwagon. Okay, you bandwagon now the, the, ra- the radio's well, back, for, right? For the radio audience okay. that might have missed your your. Um, it's your very opinion. simple. The, yes. I need uh, radio audience. Listen, I need Rich's help because he has an enormous amount of gravitas in the sports world. Thank Somebody you, needs to take this torch. We can't have kids who live in Miami walking around with Steph Curry jerseys. Why? I don't like this thing that is underlining, which is young children and grown men and women are using sports teams to subsidize their lack of self-esteem. They think that putting on a Tom Brady jersey in Minnesota means they're winning. I need a, I need a news alert for everybody. That team is winning. You're not a winner. You root for a winner, right? And when you root for a winner, when you, first of all, I used St. Louis mm-hmm. in the last segment. At least they don't have an NBA team, right? I mean, to me, if you have a team in the town that you're born in, you live there, and you are rooting for the Jordan Bulls or the Curry Warriors or, or LeBron Heat and Cavs. It, it is a tell that you're a losing player in life and you need to stop doing it to yourself. So, all right, so let me walk through it here. Yes. How many kids do you have? Two. Okay. Did they all root for the Jets and Knicks? Uh, <laughs> Come on, though. I would beat them. Dude. Come I would on. I would do things that are politically incorrect Did in you? today's parenting environment <laughs> to does, assure it. Does your wife have any rooting interest though? Yeah, the Jets and the Knicks. <laughs> We're old school about <laughs> it. It's like the movie Diner. Did you give her a let's, quiz let's, before let's you throw, married let's, her? Let's, throw, let's throw AJ back up on the screen if you guys can. Mm-hmm. That little guy, mm-hmm. when I went away to school, I came home. Yeah. First time, Thanksgiving, you know how you do it, yeah. right? You come home. Yeah. I come home. That guy, he's three there, but he's at the point when I come home, mm-hmm. he's like six or something. I walk into his room. And I'm just walking to my room and somehow I glance into his room and his closet's open and I see a Barry Sanders jersey in there. I walk into the room, I grab the Sanders jersey, I grab little him, I tear the Sanders jersey in front of him. I run downstairs, Rich, and I lose my my mind on my mom saying, how could you do this? Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, yes, you know. So then then how do you feel the fact that uh, I... Here's my fear, hold on, say, no, 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 hold on a second. So we'll walk through my own personal situation. I, I married into a New England sports family. Okay. okay. So I could not, while Tom Brady being the University of Michigan legend that he is, yes. with the, jersey, the, the helmet right here. Such a legend that Drew Henson and, played over him. And it, oh. <laughs> so, he's such a legend. I mean, put, 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 but no, just put your Jets flag yeah, away for okay. two seconds. It's, it will wow. never go anywhere just, but, but in my heart. And put, and put your hardcore business acumen here. Yes. Okay. Winning, losing. Yes. You want to win. I'm putting my business acumen. You are going to tell, you told, you, if your children had any possible rooting interest because the mom was into it or their, your, your, your the college mom ruling interest. Hold yeah. on a second. Go ahead. You're going to tell your child, r- hope that Christian Hackenberg grows into something well, over Tom Brady? He's like, a former really? Raider. I don't even know who you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and number two, uh, here's what I would say. Yeah? I would say the following. Putting my business hat on, I would tell my little son mm-hmm. and daughter and any other little sons and daughters out there listening right now that if you live in Cleveland and you are a Tom Brady fan, putting my business hat on, mm-hmm. you are highly likely to not be that successful in life. <laughs> Because you are not accountable. You are, you are using outside forces to oh, subsidize man. your inabilities. And I just, I, it's a tell. It is a tell. Now, context. If you marry a spouse and that's her team and the kids go that route, respect. If you went to a college and mm-hmm. he was the star of that college, yes. less respect because you have to, listen, I if Tom Brady got traded to the Jets today, mm-hmm. he'd be my favorite player of all time. Okay. So to me, what happened to him, Michigan to New England, yes. right? Mm-hmm. That's where your legions had to stop being a Jets fan. Not only stop, you should hate him with all your might. I wish enormous pain to Tom Brady. <laughs> 
like this whole thing that's going down clearly in New England, you know, with the with the medicine guy who's, I mean, this is all, this. I cannot wait for the 30 for 30 on this little last couple years, because yeah. clearly this weird medicine guy who's cheating, because what we, we got the receiver now banned for, Edelman's out for four, here's the bottom line. The 30 for 30 in seven years, on these last couple years of the breakup of the New England, you know, empire, is going to be must-see TV for every Jets fan. Directed by Gary Vaynerchuk. I will probably produce it. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is probably true. Coming to a theater near you. Uh, in the two minutes we have yes. left, have you ever come across Woody Johnson? Uh, yes. Yeah, the Jets were first client of Vayner. Very lightly. I, I, I don't, I don't want to be audacious. I have an ambition. Yes. I'm super far away from it. And I don't need to be wasting Woody Johnson's time. Mm -hmm. Woody's doing what Woody's doing. Chris is doing what Chris is doing. Yes. I'm going to put my head down and work 18 hours a day for the next 30 years mm -hmm. to even give me the prayer of pulling it off. Mm -hmm. For me to pander or peacock or even disrespect their time with like, hey, I'm going to buy the team mm -hmm. is silly talk. So sure, but I've never talked about my ambitions with him because it's below him and he doesn't need to worry about it. You're the man, Gary. I wish I could have the whole hour with you. Well, we can do it. If Reed doesn't stick me on the 405 That's, for next <laughs> wow. time. Well, I mean, next you just got to buy a helicopter company out here in Los Angeles. You know? It's a waste of money. I got to save every dollar. Those jets are going to be expensive. <laughs> 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 TJ, I'm pushing for you. A wrestling hour. It's bigger than people think. You need to be in this chair. I know you're behind the scenes now with the camera and you make a little tweet. You make a little Pinterest. I get it. But you need to be sitting here and talk about why Randy the Macho Man Savage is actually underrated considering how rated he is. Actually underrated, Rich. Well, when we're done off the air, we have an app-only segment because I'm interested. Gary's, G Gary, there, there's, as you know, we're entrepreneurs here at the Rich Eisen Show. <laughs> it's a multimedia platform. How many t-shirts are you guys selling? What do you mean t-shirts? Well, I have a business idea for you. You come up, like every show mm -hmm. should pick the funniest thing said, yes. convert into a t-shirt in yes. real time, yes. sold on Shopify, and I think you guys could be making four to seven million in revenue. Maybe that's why DP's show's been doing it for a while. You know? Okay. So Mike Del Tufo who hasn't, for some reason, said a word. Are you feeling all right over I'm there? I'm fine. Okay. He's listening. He's enjoying. No, Thanks, Mike, not. what do you think? Exactly. I'm a top I three guest. I'm a top three guest all time, right? <laughs> Easy. <laughs> easy. Easy. Only if you, easy. Only if you showed up on you're time. you're from New Jersey. That's, that's it. You're here. You're in. Where are, you, are you from Jersey? Yeah, Livingston. Oh, my God. I love Livingston. Yeah, and that's a mass hole over there who's been listening to everyone. I saw the page. I, I saw it. It's funny he's got the Browns helmet. I, the, it's, uh, that's it's Jim, it's it's Jim Brown. It's Syracuse, Syracuse helmet. helmet. That's Syracuse. Respect. The <laughs> funny thing, let me jump to the Browns real quick. I know we're running out of time. The biggest reason I think Darnold's going to go to the Hall of Fame is because the Browns passed on him. It's my, like as a Jets fan. By the way, I will take that bet, Darnold Hall of Fame, right now. You think no? Yes, I'll take that bet. Well, that uh, fine. I'll take it anyway because now it's filmed forever. You, you have to make me GM of the Jets when you own the team. No, for that's a day. A, no, that's a Manchurian general manager candidate over there. <laughs> Gary, thanks for coming. Thanks on. for having me, guys. You got Thank it. you. At Gary V, everywhere on social. Two silent media. E's. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.